Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be learning about the trigonomic functions of acute angles. The three main trigonomic functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. Look at the triangle on the screen. Let's think of it in terms of a graph. If you are thinking of it in this way, you can see that this leg here is the same as y. This leg would be the same as x. And the hypotenuse we are going to label as r. Sine, cosine, and tangent are essentially different ways of getting the measurement of an unknown angle based off of what information we have. This table shows the def different definitions of these trigonomic functions. As you can see, the sine of an unknown angle will be found with the value of y divided by the value of r. The cosine of an unknown angle will be found with the value of x divided by the value of r. The tangent of an unknown angle will be found with the value of y divided by the value of x. These three functions all have reciprocal functions, which means they're opposites. So the cosecant of an unknown angle, which is the reciprocal of sine, will be found by the value of r divided by the value of y. Similarly, the secant of an unknown angle, which is the reciprocal of cosine, will be found with the value of r divided by the value of x. Finally, the cotangent of an unknown angle, which is the reciprocal of tangent, will be found with the value of x divided by the value of y. Now we are going to start finding the measurements of unknown angles. Let's look at this triangle that I am drawing on the screen. These are the measurements that are given to us. Let's imagine that this triangle is on a graph. If this were the case, you would see that 8 is our y value and 6 would be our x value. We can find the value of r by using the Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to give us our r squared. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 100. So if 100 equals r squared, the square root of 100 will equal r. So if we take the square root of both of these numbers, we see that 100, sorry, that 10 equals r. Now all that is left to do is to put the correct values in the correct formulas. So the sine of an unknown angle, which is y over r, would be 8 over 10 or simplified as 4 over 5. The cosine is x over r, which is 6 over 10, which we could also simplify as 3 fifths. The tangent is y over x which is going to be 8 over 6. However, we can simplify this to 4 over 3. Now, let's find the reciprocals of these numbers. So the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine, is going to be 5 over 4. The secant which is the reciprocal of cosine is going to be 5 over 3. And the cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent, is going to be 3 over 4. Let's take it a step further, however. We have these numbers. Let's take sine, for example. We know that in our problem, sine equaled 4 over 5. We know that 4 over 5 equals 0 0.8. Does that mean that the angle is 0 0.8 degrees? Of course not. There's actually two ways to find the measurement of an angle. One way is by using a table. Another way that we can find the measurement is by using our calculator. If you notice above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on your calculator, there are the same words as on the large buttons, but with a small negative 1 next to them. 
We are going to use these functions to find the measurement. Unlike many people believe, these are not for the reciprocals of the trigonomic functions. They are for finding the measurement of the angles. So if we press sine to the negative 1 and type in 0 0.8, we are going to find a number which I will round to 53.1. This is the measurement of our angle. Because we know that the other angle is 90 degrees, we can add the two angles together. So 180 minus 53.1 plus 90 is going to equal 36.9. You are more than welcome to pause the video and try this out with the other functions. Let's try this again, but a little differently. What if instead of a triangle, you are given a point, which you are told passes through the terminal side of an angle? How would you find the six different trigonomic functions now? Keep in mind that the terminal side is a straight line, which has been rotated around a point on another line to form an angle measured in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Compare initial side. How would you find the six different trigonomic functions now? Let's take this example. Here we can see that the x-coordinate is 8 and the y-coordinate is 15. Even though the length of r is unknown, we can easily find it by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 8 is our x value and 15 is our y value. So we can do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals... 17 we can see that answer is 17. So 17 is going to be our r value. Now all that is left is plugging in the correct numbers into the correct equations. Go ahead and pause the video and try it out. All right let's go ahead and do this now. So if we look at our table we can see that sine is equal to y over r. So our sine value is going to be 15 over 17. Our cosine value is equal to x over r, so our cosine is going to be 8 over 17. And our tangent is equal to 15 over 8, which is y over x. Now for the reciprocal functions. Our cosecant which is the reciprocal of sine, is going to be 17 over 15. Our secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, is going to be 17 over 8. And our cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent, is going to be 8 over 15. Before I end the video, I just want to point out that there are many different identities and relationships that involve these six different trigonomic functions, as you can see on the screen. Even though we didn't need to use them in today's problems, they will come in handy later on when you are solving more complex problems involving trigonomic functions. So please keep them in the back of your mind and study them so that they are available to you when you will need them. I hope you learned a lot. I'll see you in the next video.